Shenandoah. All right, this is cool for us, especially when we get to bring in, you know, musical influences, legends. Here he, no, don't, you don't come in yelling, roll tide. Come in. Come in and sit down over here. Come in yelling, roll tide. Uh-huh. You, know, you, you come into my house and pee on the floor. That's what just happened there. Oh, I guess you wore yeah, that yeah. just for us today. You huh? know, No, I wear it every day. But I'm also jealous that you get to yell, roll tide. I don't yeah. want to yell, roll tide, but I'm jealous that you guys have you, a... You can yell it. No, yeah. I, I, I refuse. You could. Yeah. Hey. Come on in. Hey, everybody. Good to see hey. you. Hello, hello. Yeah, have a seat over here. Yeah, everything's mm-hmm. great. Do you have yours in? Peace, yeah. love. Johnny Hey, you didn't yell, roll tide. We appreciate that. You see, he's got his. Yeah, Mike comes back in and starts shirt. yelling, roll tide immediately. Yeah, well, I saw your shirt from through the glass window over there, so. Yeah, you can't miss it. Big yeah, and red. That's right. So, how are we doing? Good, man. How about you? Yeah. Grab that microphone right there, Marty. Right there behind you. Right, right at your butt. There it is. Boom. Look at you two. Back again, looking better than ever. So, got the. Hey, st- I was just looking at a picture of us last time we did this show. I bet you we've lost 200 pounds between the two of us. Seriously. You two? Yes. Yeah, well, use that uh, mic. You got to use. You got to talk in the mic. We're on the air. Yeah, Mars, you're oh, saying. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, I was in a commercial. No, hey, commercial. We're on the air here. <laughs> no, I'm sorry no, about that. I'm sorry, folks. I, was a, I, I forgot he's that. Now he's like it's funny and voice. he's like charming and <laughs> hilarious. No, actually, I thought we were at a commercial, but no, 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 no. It, in the green room, Mike said 250, and I thought that sounded more like it. I've, I've lost 137. So. And I've lost 73. Really? So. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and 63, just going in the wrong direction, bro. And how do you feel? Oh, I feel fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Would you consider, Marty, would you consider your haircut still to be a mullet? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I'll be honest with you. I, I don't know that that that, uh, that I ever had a mullet. But it, know, it's, it's like not long, cut like a mullet. Okay, it's not short. Maybe it's not short <laughs> enough on top, but it definitely goes back. You could pin it and do a little ponytail. I've not seen. Mammy, would you say that's yeah, a mullet? Yeah, you could do that. I see it was mullet-ish to me. It has I, vibes. But it's it, true. It's definitely mullet-ish. B- mullet-ish. Yeah, he's it's got more mullet-ish. It's more of a mole. He's but, a mullet-ish. Mike, you're saying, you got basically the same haircut. Yeah, pretty much. And you guys have, that's what I like, though. Yeah, <laughs> it's the same. We're the same, not the same being, barber. <laughs> you're not being anything you aren't. Yeah. You no, no, no. It, it, we have the uh, same barber. Yeah, I, I mean, the same gal that cuts my hair today, same gal that cut my hair years ago. Wow. Well, you know, you went through, you know, you went through a, a time there, Mark, where you had it all cut off short. Come back out here again, and you grow it back out. Is that Some real? That. You guys real hair? Yeah. Yeah. You want to pull it? We do that. I, I, people think my hair's fake all the time. I got to grab it and be like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Shenandoah is here, which, by the way, let's, let's talk new for a second. I got a bunch of stuff to talk about. Okay. But let's do this because I want to play the song first. Uh, obviously, we love Two Dozen Roses, 1989, the original. Uh, if I could cry a little harder and get a little less sleep at night. If, if I had to. Thank you. Um, <laughs> love it. But then... You guys did it again, but you did it with Luke Combs. How did this whole thing come about, and how did you get Luke on it? Well, uh, really, the uh, the whole thing was uh, we'd started uh, with Noah Gordon at at the label at Eight Track Entertainment. We'd you know and, you know every any time you ever sign with a new label, you know they want to well you know let's take three or four of the best songs you ever had and let's re-record them. <laughs> so anyway, so we did, and and uh, of course, two dozen roses w- was one of them, and uh, we already had a track cut on it, and uh, so anyway, so uh, we started getting uh, uh, texts from people going, "Hey, man, have you seen me and Luke Combs doing two dozen roses?" He live? was already covering it, yeah, in the show, yeah. That's and, and, cool. and to be honest with you, uh, it, it two dozen roses has become so popular. We knew before too long somebody was gonna somebody was gonna redo it and just cover it and put it somebody out. Somebody was yeah. gonna cover it yeah. and, and before it was all over, we'd, you know, then we would lose it. You know, because so I it. mean that's what happens. So you did it, yeah, yeah. So it. so we just figured, man, look, let's let's see if Luke won't want to do it. So uh, I started texting Luke back and, and forth, and we we started the dialogue, and and before it was all over with, that's that's what happened. He got in the studio, and we kind of followed up. It's awesome. Yeah, it's all. I mean, the original's awesome. It's always been a great song. This is like list. awesome as well. Not any more awesome. Not any less awesome. But it's like awesome now. What song do you think gets the the biggest crowd singing, chanting re- reaction? Church on Cumberland Road. Mm-mm, two dozen roses. Oh, it does. Oh yeah. Th- that easy, huh? They, they sing it from the beginning to the end too. They don't just sing the choruses. Is it because though that song is a little slower and you can hear words more? Who knows? You know. I'm, I don't know. I, I guess that's just my answer, so I wanted that to be the answer. <laughs> Cumberland Road. Yeah, it's Cumberland Road. Whoa! Say, two dozen road. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> do they do that? Whoa! They do do yeah, that. Do. Very loudly. Awesome. <laughs> Where do you play Cumberland Road in your set? 
Last. Last. Last song we do. And two, two Dozen Roses right in front of it. Oh, so. wow. oh yeah. That's Leave it with a bang. What do you start with? What's the first song? Next to you, next to me. Dang. Oh, oh ain't no jam. place that I'd, I'd rather, rather be next to you. Next, next to me. Do you get annoyed people sing your songs back to you like that? <laughs> It's awesome when they sing it back. No, like us now. When no, we're like, not even asking you questions. We're just singing songs at you. Uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. You know what I like at the end of the song where it goes, There ain't no place that I'd rather be next to you. Next, next to me. That's my part. I like that one, too. Yeah. Big harmony there. All right, there they are. Shannon Doyle, everybody. All right, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for coming in, guys. <laughs> hey, so you guys are touring like crazy. We've always toured like crazy. I hear you. We but never slow down. But again, you're still touring like crazy. You have to like... 50 more dates this year, I was looking, or something like that. Like, why? Do you feel more comfortable on the road than at home? No. You, you know, it's just really kind of, man, this thing, this thing's just really, you know, taking off. You know, I, I'd left the band for about 17 years, and then when I came back, uh, you know, I figured if we was going to do it, you know, when me and Mike talked about, you know, putting the wheels back on this thing, if we were going to do it, you know, let's – if we hadn't said everything we wanted to say, and and we wanted to make sure that that uh, that we got the music out there and and put on the shows that we wanted to do, then then man, let's let's do everything in the world we can to make that happen. Why'd you guys stop? Uh, well, I mean, they didn't stop. I mean, I left. But but at, you know, all of you together are you guys. So why did why did you guys stop for a while? Why'd you stop, Marty? Uh, well, I, I'll be honest with you. I, I think of I th honest and truly, I think a lot of mine was burnt out. You know, man, I, I mean, you think we were working a lot now. I mean, we, we were like mercenaries. Mm. Oh, we've still got T-shirts that says, I survived 310 days with Shenandoah. The first wow. year we were out, we did 310 days away from home. Not that many shows, but we were yeah, gone from I home. I should say we were, 310 we were gone from home. That's basically the same. It's travel day is still out on the road That's day. Right. Yeah, yeah, it, it sure down. is. And, uh, you know, man, after about after about 10 or 11 years of that, I mean, that you know, it was just enough. It was enough for me. I, you know, I was kind of kind of burnt out. And then why get back in? Did you miss it? Did you miss Mike? Mike's caress or what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, not really. No. <laughs> uh, no, you know, tell you the truth, I you know I had a had a little bluegrass band, and and uh, you know my brother Tim and I uh, had did the butterfly kisses thing uh, for a little bit, and and uh, you know we just uh, what do you mean it, butterfly kisses thing? Uh, you, like Bob Carlyle song, Butterfly Kisses? Yeah, my brother Tim and I, you know, we had it out. In fact, we were the ones who got the Grammy on it. Wait, what? Yeah, Butterfly Kisses. I'm going to... Uh, butterfly Kisses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bob Carlyle sang it, but I'm going to be ignorant here, and I'm okay admitting yeah, it that. Yeah, it was the, 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 country, the country version got the Grammy. Really? Yeah. Good for you guys, sucker. Well, you should have sang the country, you know what I mean? Uh, so, I did, so you anyway, sang that. So anyway, so uh, it was in uh, 97, I think. Huh. In 97. Uh, but anyway, uh, the thing about it is, 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 uh, uh, you know, we had talked about several years before then, you know, putting the wheels back on it, you know, but we just, we just didn't feel like the timing was right. Did you feel like with the overwhelming resurgence of popularity of nineties country that when you guys hit and went back out again, that it was, the audience was going to be there for you? No, you know, to be honest, we, we were so ignorant to that at that point. No, we, we didn't have a clue in the world what 90s music meant at that time. I mean, we really seriously didn't. That was nine years ago. We we had no idea that what 90s music meant whatsoever. I mean, we just we just felt like, you know, they, they were still something to say, and we, we believed we could say it. That, there was another tune out there that we could cut, you know, that, uh, uh, that would be, you know, uh, a smash and and we're in the studio right now well we've actually finished up we're waiting on a couple of vocals uh to be done we just cut a killer with allison krauss somewhere in the vicinity of the heart oh no no this is a different this one? Is a brand new one, yeah. and i mean it's just i mean it will it will absolutely rail the lumber i don't know what that means marty rail the lumber yeah, that means it's it's Feels it, like it hurts. It's, it's, I think it's. <laughs> you're my lumber. I don't it feel good. It does kind of sound like it. Yeah. <laughs> so it make, like make you emotional. Killer. Is that what it means? It, 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 yeah. It's it's very much. It's it's a love song. I mean, and it really is. I mean, it's a it's another, it's another vicinity of the heart, and and uh, I want to be loved like that all all together in one. You know, and it's just. I mean, it's just got a lot of. It, it's good. It, it's a good tune. Well, When's when, that coming out? When we hear it. Yeah. Well, that, you know we. I don't know when it's coming out. I have no idea. I mean, do it like 10 seconds up for us. Yeah. And yeah, no, sing it like 10 seconds. 
No, I can't do that okay, either. Okay, see? He's not he's not giving it to us here. Okay, that's okay. You don't go to jail or what? Music jail? <laughs> yeah. I've been there. It ain't fun. So, speaking of rail and lumber, if Bubba can dance, rail my lumber. Is that how you say it? Uh, railed my, yeah. I don't. Yeah. No, that doesn't. I don't think no. you should say that. Railing lumber is what that is, and, and that's really actually not vulgar at all. It just means. No, I know. Oh. You know, it's bringing the timber. You know, it's kind exactly of like, you know, bringing in the mail, carrying the mail. Absolutely, and Bubba can dance. Works, brought man, my timber. Did, yeah, you know, you you got it. Yeah, there Bubba it is, can man. dance. I can too. Yeah. Do you get? Do you, do you, you really it? like that song? Heck yeah! Are you kidding me? Awesome. Do you not? You know, me and Marty wrote that song with Bob McDill, of course. Yeah, well, why would I not well, like that song? I, I love that song. On TV yeah. And ordered that video. Yeah. And see, that's that's one of the reasons. I'm metronome why. on you. I think that's the tempo yeah. too. Mm -hmm. Mike, yeah, that's know. it. Yeah, I'm, I'm. I got it. You got it. <laughs> yeah. All right, go ahead. Finish your story there. Bob, we can dance. Anyway, that the tempo on that, it's yeah. uh, it, it's a it's four on the floor. It's it's that it's that addictive beat that it's that underlying thing that people get. And and you know when you did that, that I mean that's. That's what that's what attracts a lot of people to tempo songs. You know that song almost didn't get written. Why? We uh, we were actually writing with Bob McDill. We'd written all afternoon with Bob. We had to leave that afternoon, going somewhere on the road, and we had to catch the bus. And we'd been writing all afternoon and and uh, hadn't hit on anything. And uh, Bob, we'd already put our guitars in the cases and getting ready to go. And Bob said, "Hey man, you guys came out of Muscle Shows and those bars down there." He said. I've been seeing on uh, on these uh, country music TV shows, people doing all these line dances and stuff like that. He said, are, are people really doing that in these bars? And I just said, I don't know how they're doing it everywhere else, Bob, but, you know, the place we were at, there was two guys, and I can't remember. One of them's name was Buddy something, and the other guy I can't remember. But they always, they knew how to do all the, they knew how to twirl the girls. they get out there on the dance floor, and they could, you know, do all the, the dance. It wasn't line dances. But anyway, the, you know, there would be girls literally standing on the side of the stage waiting for the, the song to be over so they could go out and get them to dance with them. And so anyway, Bob said, well, that's, that's pretty interesting. And he said, let me run to the restroom real quick and then we'll go. So he goes to the bathroom and he comes back in and said, hey, you know what? I've got an idea on what you were just saying about that, those two guys. He said, i got a song title. And we said, what is it? And he said, if Bubba can dance, I can too. And he said, well, make those guys be Bubba. And so we got our guitars out. And we wrote the first verse in chorus and had to go. And then Bob wrote the last verse by himself. But, uh, I mean. It gave me it gave me confidence. I mean, if, you know, if he hadn't asked Bubba that can question, dance. I feel like I can, too. You know, if yeah, yeah, sure. some, one of my idiot friends is doing something. It's not even just about dancing. Like, if one of my buddies can do, why can't I not try it? You guys don't even know what you motivated. I wouldn't be here without that song. Well, you know, it uh, it's funny how things, uh, how things turn about. It just kind of depends on, you know. How you want to handle anything in life, I reckon. And if you want to rail some lumber, freaking go to town. <laughs> rail the lumber. Mike, how's it, how's, how's it, how's it, how's the drama coming? Good. I just bought me a new set of DWs, man. I love uh, them. I don't know what that means. There is, it's a brand. Oh, is that a good I brand? I love them. Yeah. To me, that's, that's cat's meow. Mm, again. Wow. You never heard of the cat's meow? Does that mean like it's. Uh, They're the best. Okay. The bee's knees. Yeah. Got it, got yeah, it, got yeah. it. So <laughs> we're going to have to bring y'all a book of Shenandoahism. Yeah. <laughs> Do you ever wonder if we would have named our band something different, people would have an easier time spelling it? Probably, yeah. yeah. I've and seen it, it spelled every way it can be spelled. Mm -hmm. On the marquee, too. I mean. What's really good is when somebody goes, uh, hey, uh, is she, what, can you tell me where Shannon's at? Oh, yeah. Shannon Shenandoah. Yeah. That's we still funny. we still get that people are knocking on the door of the bus and is Shannon up there? Hey, I want to I want to talk to Shannon. T tell him t he knows me. And, it, and it, <laughs> Shannon's a dude, obviously. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you guys, uh, Muscle Shoals, growing up with that music culture around you, do you, you can you like hear that old blues like in your recordings from like the nineties? Like, the, did, did any of that rub off into your country music? You know, I think uh, one of the one of the greatest things uh, that when we started doing what we were doing. You know, Jim Seals came from a background of of, of rock and roll and, and, and real soulful stuff. You know, Stan came from a jazz perspective, and Ralph uh, was as well. And, and, and Memphis Delta Blues and, and uh, coming out of bluegrass, Mike and myself, uh, you know, we grew up around bluegrass music and, and uh, a, a lot of the soul that was in, in bluegrass music, uh, you know, it, it, it really... It really helped a lot, and uh, and I think it kind of there there was a like a forging of, of of a lot of that that was all put together that that came together. It's kind of like the uh, 
uh, the man of constant sorrow cut, you know, uh, man, it, 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 you know, it sounds like right off the press of, uh, of Ralph and Carter Stanley. Oh, I am a man of constant sorrow, you know, and it's just, you know, where people actually, you know, they, they heard the hurt and what they were singing about. And of course, up through the Appalachia, you know, that's, that, 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 there was a lot of that, that that went on. There was a lot of coal mining that went on and, and not safe coal mining and then just a hard way of living. And, uh, and people took to that and it meant a lot to them. And when people would write songs that would be local songs that were there that just for people to listen to, they didn't do it for any industry. The stuff that they would write was, you know, they were singing to one another because it, you know, everybody identified with it. Everybody knew what they were talking about. It was like parables, you know. Whenever I hear talk about bluegrass, and you can tell me I'm completely wrong, but when I, the lick, you know, don't the, uh, church on Cumberland Road, like I, it's almost like a a bluegrassy lick in the guitar part there because it's so fast, you know. Duh, 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 duh. Any any of that bluegrass experience affect your guitar playing with some of the way you play guitar? Oh well, it does. I mean, Jim and Mike would always make fun that the way that I I would play rhythm, but. You know, the, the only way I knew how to play rhythm was to keep time, you know, and it may not be on the stroke that that where they felt like it needed to be, but, you know, I, I just kind of felt like it, you know. And and for some tunes, it, it didn't fit, you know, but to me it did, you know. Like Sunday in the South didn't fit, maybe? Uh, no, Sunday in the South fit well. Well, know? I'm wrong. I'm wrong again. This is stupid. I'm stupid, <laughs> and we're going to go and go. Yeah. All right, there they are. <laughs> Shannon and Doa have been here, and they've been a really great guest. <laughs> Uh, so, quickly, you guys have, I'm going to just promote these shows real quick. Uh, get tickets at shenandoahband.com, but Georgia, Tennessee, Midland, Texas, Clinton, Tennessee, Bowling Green, Kentucky. I would spend money to go watch you guys. And no. I don't, we don't okay. spend, no, 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 I'm not giving you money now. <laughs> <laughs> if you need a loan, we can talk interest rates. But, okay. but I was like, you guys are awesome, and you were a big part of me musically growing up, but you're also still good now. And that's what's really cool to see you guys out still, like, performing at a level that's just fun. To, like, you guys in Brooks and Dunn. Like, I can see both of you guys perform and feel like I'm still there, but also enjoy what's happening now. Well, you know, the thing that we we always try to do, uh, Bobby, and, and, and we've always tried to do it. You know, look, you know, people have spent a little bit of money to come see us, and we appreciate that. Uh, and, you know, actually, we, you know, we were hired to entertain people. And we like it when folks, you know, sing and, and they sing along and – and have a good time and clap their hands and hoop and holler and that kind of stuff. And uh, if we can get them, if we can get them to that spot and people, you know, really enjoy themselves and they they sing along, you know, at the end of the evening, whether it's ninety minutes or two hours, depending on however long we play. But at the end of that ninety minutes or two hours, uh, at the end of the evening, they they feel like they were a part of a show instead of just sitting and witnessing one. You know, look, I, I I've been to shows that I that I actually liked a lot. But uh, there wasn't a whole lot of entertainment in it. You know, who I went to go see, they did what I wanted them to do, and I, and I enjoyed it. But there wasn't a lot of entertainment in it, you know. And, and that's, that, that's their groove. That's, you know, that's, that's the way they do it. But, you know, as far as what we do, it's, it's real high energy, and, and uh, we try to get folks involved in what we're doing, like I say. And, and uh, man, we love it when people do. And, and uh, uh, we'd, we've been, it's been coming away pretty good here of late. You know, the crowds have gotten absolutely humongous. And, uh, you know, we just, brother, we're still chasing the dream. That's what we're doing. We're still railing the lumber. Me too. I'm railing it right now. Yeah. <laughs> That's not what you're doing. If I go, oh, oh, oh. Do that. Oh, oh, oh. No, you're not, you're not doing it right. Oh, oh, oh. oh yeah, that's better. That's better than that. <laughs> I never knew the mother loved me so hard. You know that song? I don't. I'm singing your song. It must not be singing yeah, it. Yeah, it's it is. He just you, you, Bobby, you didn't give me much to go on, he bro. Just I, you get to come back to the church on the Cumberland Road. <laughs> bam, bam, bam. You ever heard that one? Yeah, we've been rocking all night, but don't you know you got to get me to the church on the Cumberland Road. Bam, down, 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 down. I wrote that one. Me and Jimmy Dickey, <laughs> 1964. <laughs> <laughs> Look, everybody, go watch Shenandoah. I love these guys. That's why I can sit here and give them a hard time because I, I enjoy their music, but also enjoy them as people. What I want to say before we leave here, 
is one, check out their new song. We can't wait for the new music. You let us know when it's done. I, I will. I you, know. You, I need to hear this love song. That's right. You tickled us. Oh, I'll okay. tell you what I'll do, and I, I'll, I'll do it right here nationally. When we get it done, I literally will walk in one day and personally deliver a copy of it that you can play. And cash in the rubber band to play no. it. Oh, no, no. Oh, no, I mean, sorry. No, yeah. Sorry, sorry. I was thinking. I mean, I'll this. accept that. No, no, no. Oh, yeah. I'm going to give it in. Got it, got it, got it. You don't have to do yes. that. But yes, I I will on the way. You can throw it at me on the way out. No, you were going to give it to me. He to play was implying it. you paid us. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. Hey, that's payola. Yep. Hey, <laughs> I'm trying to that. keep him out of trouble. Yes, yeah, that. yes. Okay, that's just the way it works these days. Let right? me, let me, <laughs> let me ask you guys this. My final question. Back in, I don't know, 90s, 2000s, whatever, I have friends that I have really healthy rivalries with that I am like, that's like, that's my dude, but I'm also like, we're, we're rivals. We're competing. Do you have any rivalries with any country artists? I, I, I don't know that we have contemporary. Any. Your peers <laughs> you got awfully I mean, quiet. We, huh? we are, well, I was thinking, and I was too. I, you know, I, you know, I, I think the the good thing about what we've been able to do is, you know, we 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 just always seem to have a good relationship with you know with everybody. Little Texas, you ever want to fight those guys? Oh, oh no. we, used to, we used to beat their butts every day. Boom, that's what I'm talking about. That's all I need, and we're out of here, baby. <laughs> just kidding. Hey, look, uh, the revival tour, ShenandoahBand.com. Get that new music done. Let us know. We will. You bet. Seriously, you guys go to these shows. I, I, I wasn't kidding about that. I, when, when, when we get when we get it done, I, I personally bring it. Well, you Do know. You wanna, I know you all said you were playing in Midland. You say that was a date, right? Oh, yes. 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 Okay, so. I'm going to do that to every answer. Anytime now. I hear, you know, Mama Knows, you know, Mama Knows, your song, that I. Sometimes I don't know their songs. I sang it perfectly <laughs> to them. They didn't know it. <laughs> right? That's one of my favorite songs Mine ever. Too. And what, it, what? It, Mama so, Knows. Mama knows. Yes. Yep. And the, anytime I hear it, it takes me right back to Midland, Odessa, to Big Daddy's Catfish and Chicken, because I went there for spring break one year and um, I worked like I just was a hostess. And that's where I go every single time in my mind whenever I hear it. Music's funny like that, isn't it? Isn't you can hear it? a song and boom, you're yeah, you know, right think, back. And think you're railing you, lumber before you even know it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you pressed would honest and truly said it best. A song remembers when. Yeah. And yeah. it, 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 it literally can can transform and take you back to places that you never never thought it would and all of a sudden you'll hear something and bam you're right in the same it's even the same smell no i smell the hush puppies yeah oh, that's yeah. what i'm saying it's even the same smell mm -hmm. you know Set i'd love to have some chicken finger right now i would love to just have some lunch right now yeah <laughs> maybe <laughs> i want to grab some um, so here's the thing set me up i'm going to play church on cumberland road tell me a story what when i say tell me a story about church on cumberland road the song performing it what story comes to mind first uh, Winona Judd told me uh, at the TNN Viewers of Choice Viewer Choice Awards, uh, we'd had that, and uh, and then we'd we'd had uh, I think uh, uh, two dozen roses Sunday and said anyway. So uh, we were performing, and she said, "You know, are y'all y'all going to do two dozen? I mean, uh, Church on Cumberland Road." And I said, "No, I I think we're going to do. Uh, I want to be loved like that." She goes, "You know." Church on Cumberland Road was pitched to us. We, 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 you know, we knew that wasn't for us. And I thought to myself, no, that, that don't sound like a judge tune to me. Anyway, I, I said, man, I'm, I'm glad y'all passed on it. You know, that's crazy. They yeah, I mean, that, 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 yeah. seriously, that I'll think of that sometimes, and that's that's what that's what comes to mind. And what about next to you, next to me? What what comes to mind when I say next to you, next to me? What what story or idea or memory? Well, I know that uh, we never had a fiddle in the band up until that point. And, uh, you know, coming out of bluegrass music, you know, I thought, you know, uh, man, it sure would be nice. My daddy was a fiddle player. I mean, it sure would be nice if we had, 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 had a little fiddle. Yeah. And plus, Mark O'Connor fiddled it. And, man, you, you, son, he could, you know, he he he, he can carry the mail, too. And... Uh, Anyway, but you know, by the time we got done with that, and you hear all the fiddle licks on it, man, it was just, man, you'd think, man, surely to goodness, man, this is, you know, the song's already there. The fiddle just kind of, kind of put the icing on the cake. Man, I don't always like icing, but that cake, I liked <laughs> a lot. Yeah, <laughs> uh, super good to see you guys. See you soon. Keep killing it. We love you. Thank you, Bob. And, and, appreciate yeah. you having me. Hey, we appreciate yeah, you. Good to see you. There they are. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah.